they talk about reconciliation, but the first part of reconciliation is always truth. Only now is the truth getting out, but truth is not something that that our uh, policymakers in this country ever want to to engage. But I'll tell you who wants to know the truth, the public. And when they come down and they talk to me, to the best of my ability and my recollection and my understanding of my own culture, I give them the truth. What's your advice for non-Indigenous allies? I'm so uh, distressed. I want to help all the Indigenous people. And I said, where do you live? And they told me a little small town. I said, well, what indigenous people lived in your small town? Oh, I don't know. Well, how did your small town get the name that it has? I don't know. I said, well, before you try to solve the problem of the whole country, just find out for yourself where you live and whose land you're living on and who are the people there and roll it back, that's the best thing you could do. It's easy to find out the history of, of the territory in which you live. The Bruce Peninsula has been called the Bruce Peninsula forever, except when the indigenous people occupied it, it was called the Saugeen Peninsula. And we just said, let's take the name back. Forget about Bruce Peninsula. Bruce was uh, was a uh, a governor general or somebody like that who who happened to uh, get his name attached to a, you know, he was never there. Retrieve the history. There's a hundred thousand years of history here. When you look at the policy that John A. Macdonald created, where he said we uh, our government has to kill the Indian and the child, is enough not to have a, a, a building named after him or a, or a statue erected to him. What do you say to those who, um, who aren't trying to make excuses, <laughs> okay. but, but who say things like, okay, but in 1830 or 18, it, it was a different lens. They, they, they looked at things through a different lens. They what didn't. do you say to that? They, they, they most certainly did not look through a different lens. They looked through the lens of how to, to, to make a land grab. The lens that they were dealing with was, was, a, was a, a proclamation from the Pope in Rome who, who, who uh, made a proclamation on the article of, of discovery that any lands not occupied by Christians was called empty. There were no Christians over here. So every settler that came said the land is empty. That was a declaration by a, a, a religious figure called the Pope who, who said that. They went all over the world, wherever they could find the, the empire builders, wherever they could find non-Christian people, they took it over. What we did was we said, there's plenty of land, let's share it, called a dish with one spoon. What are your thoughts on Canada Day 2021? I would say it's a, it's a day of, uh, of uh, for uh, Canadians to um, reflect on, on what the meaning of this uh, uh, country is. Uh, are we going to continue to be a country that pretends to be asleep? Because you cannot wake somebody up who's pretending to be asleep. And we've had that problem with, uh, with uh, Canada to, since 1867. We've been trying to wake everybody up, but the whole country has been pretending to be asleep. Well, they're awake now. They're awake with the uh, voice and spirits of 215 children who are the who are the vanguard of the other could be as many as 25,000 that will be found in the next 10 years or so. And I must give credit to the uh, Premier of Ontario. He's put up 10 million for a three year project to begin the serious business of retrieving the stolen children and stolen souls because the schools, the churches, and the government slew 
our sons and daughters. We have the highest suicide rate amongst children in the whole country today. Today, our people in the north can't get fresh drinking water. And yet they found out that they can make water and uncreate it on the moon. It wasn't that the settlers came over and, and uh, landed here with nothing and were able to pull themselves up by the bootstraps and make a uh, living for themselves. They had access to the resources that were here. M my people were put into concentration camps, prisons of, of grass called reservations and not even allowed out. It was against the law for a native person to grow vegetables on the reserve and sell them in town at the market. Against the law. That is in the laws of Canada. There's a book out, 21 Things That uh, uh, you, you Should Know About the Indian Act. It's, uh, it's on the market. Anybody can buy it. And it says right there, we, we weren't allowed to speak our language. We weren't allowed to do our ceremonies. We weren't allowed to, to even hire a lawyer. To call them schools, it's like calling a torture chamber a hotel or resort. They weren't residential and they weren't schools. There is no easy silver bullet. You have to understand, we've lived with this all our lives. And all of a sudden, the whole country has found out something that we knew and said day after day after day. I even wrote poetry about it. Often when I walk alone among the forest near my home, I hear a faint whisper in the trees possessed with an insistent urgency. We are, the voices say, the silent victims of a stifled crime. Our bodies lie in unmarked graves. We are the victims of a madness, the casualties of rage. We are, the voices say, the slaughtered innocent of residential schools. Their wickedness was our apocalypse. The four horsemen of our demise they came like a whirlwind of destruction, pale riders with evil in their eyes. We are the disappeared, the voices say, the missing witness who saw the face of their real intent behind their arrogant benevolence. We lived in terror and we died in fear of neglect, abuse and suicide and now we lie beside the institutions where we died. Our souls and spirits and bodies left unclaimed. No cross or marker bears our name. The government deliberated and the churches devised a perfect solution, a flawless disguise. Educate the stolen children even to their death. Kill the Indian and the child without regret. Heathens need no place to rest. As buffalo bones were left to bleach beneath the prairie sun and sky, so too the souls of children stolen from their homes were left to perish without an honor song, without an honor dance to say goodbye. This was the first deliberate genocide. And now the institutions of church and state whose promise was to educate, apologize for their mistakes and distance themselves from that embrace that produced such venom and disgrace. These children, innocent victims, like lambs led to the slaughter, the churches, schools and governments slew our sons and daughters. I seek a monument to these slain ones, a cenotaph where I might lay a wreath, some place to kneel in wisdom and in grief. To honor the memory of those that died, we the generation that survived, we need to witness to those yet unborn that your spirits were never broken, 
that in your silent courage, suffering and pain, we learn to set aside the shame and to live our lives in triumph and in pride. And now with chant and drum, we promise and solemnly proclaim, when we assemble at powwows, work or play, we dedicate a moment as we pray to smudge with cedar, sweet grass, smoke and sage to the memory of those dear lost children who lie in unmarked graves. Miigwech.